Welcome back to Statistical Methods. This is week 11, lecture one, where I will be finishing up talking about ANOVA by discussing factorial ANOVA. Um, but just some announcements to start out. Um, quiz four goes live next Monday, um, that is November 9th, and it will cover material from weeks nine through 11. And this will be due on Friday, November 13th. Also, homework five will go live on my stat lab on Wednesday, November 4th and will be due the following Wednesday, 11.11. So thus far, we've only discussed cases where we want to examine the influence of a single, typically categorical independent variable. Now, this single independent variable has either been experimentally manipulated, so using random assignment to different groups, so what is the effect of memory encoding context on memory for word lists, and we randomly assign participants to one or two memory encoding conditions. Now, um, this IV has also been based on some pre-existing attribute. So what is the effect of religion on pro-social behavior? Or what is the effect of gender on spatial memory? However, it is often the case that researchers want to determine and quantify the effect of multiple independent variables on a single dependent variable. Now this is known as factorial ANOVA when we analyze these data. Now this is one of the strengths of the ANOVA framework and advantages over t-tests. We can generalize this method of analysis to situations with more than two levels of each independent variable, up to any number, more than one independent variable, and more than one dependent variable, and that's called a MANOVA or a multivariate analysis of variance though so we're not gonna cover this in this course. So here's a research design example. So a marketing researcher is interested in how two independent variables influence the amount of money people are willing to spend on a new electronics product. And the first independent variable is social influence, high versus low. So participants are told that the product is either highly desired, so high social influence, or undesired, low social influence. Now the second independent variable is product scarcity. Again, high versus low. Participants are told that the product is difficult, so high scarcity or easy, low scarcity to obtain. Thus, we have two categorical independent variables, influence and scarcity, each of, with, each of which have, uh, has two levels, high versus low. So there are four unique combinations of these levels. So how do I go about examining the effects of these two independent variables at once? Well, one approach would be to conduct two separate studies. In one, manipulate just social influence and do an independent samples t-test. In the other, manipulate just product scarcity and do the same. Though this approach does get at the questions of interest, there may be good reasons to examine both of these IVs at once. So one of these reasons is to examine the relative effect of one independent variable to the other within the same study. So does scarcity or social influence matter more, holding all else constant? It's also more efficient to just run one study. And we could also um, examine these dependencies between independent variables or interaction effects, which I'll get uh, more into in a second. So manipulating both of our independent variables at once, we end up with a factorial research design, which looks like this. So we end up with four groups of participants that exhaust all possible combinations of the levels of our independent variables. You have group one, which is high social influence, but also high scarcity. Group two, which is low social influence, but high scarcity. Group three, high social influence, low scarcity, and group four, low social influence, low scarcity. So this is what is known as a two by two factorial design. Now, how many numbers are given in this label, notice that there are two here, is how many independent variables there are and which numbers are given tells me how many levels or conditions of each independent variable 
there are. And multiplying these two together tells me how many different combinations are possible, or in other words, how many conditions there will be in my experiment. So some other examples, a three by two design still has two independent variables because there are only two numbers. One of them has three levels, however, and another has two. So if you multiply this by this, you find out that you have six total groups, exhausting all possibilities or all combinations of these levels of these two independent variables. Now a four by three design also has two independent variables. One of them has four levels and one of them has three levels. Multiply them together, you have 12 total groups. Now a two by two by two design has three independent variables, each of which have two levels or eight total groups. Two times two is four times two is eight. Now, finally, a three by two by two by two design has four independent variables, one with three levels and three with two levels, equaling 24 groups total. Three times two is six times two is 12 times two is 24. So in a research article, this would be explained something like this. Participants were randomly assigned to uh, experimental condition in A2, social influence, high versus low, by two, product scarcity, high versus low, between subjects factorial design. So before there was only one type of effect we had to worry about, since we only had one independent variable. For example, the effect of encoding context on memory for a list of words the effect of vitamin on mean walking age of babies, the effect of intentionality on pain perception. In other words, the effect or influence of a single independent variable on a single dependent variable. In our two by two factorial design, we also have three types of simple independent variable to dependent variable relationships, which are referred to here as main effects. I'm sorry, in our two by two factorial design, we also have these types of simple IV to DV relationships, which are referred to here as main effects. And we only have two of them. We have the main effect of social influence, the effect of social influence on how much people are willing to spend on the product across both levels of the other independent variable, product scarcity, and the main effect of product scarcity, the effect of product scarcity on how uh, much people are willing to spend on the product across both levels of the other IV, which is social influence. However, factorial designs also create the possibility for a new kind of effect we haven't discussed yet, one that arises from some unique combination of our two independent variables. For example, maybe people are willing to spend more money on the product only when both scarcity and social influence are high. Thus, it is the combination of these factors that matters more than either of them on their own. Now this type of effect in ANOVA is called a interaction effect. Being able to detect these types of effect is one of the main reasons people conduct research using factorial designs. Frequently, researchers conduct experiments using factorial ANOVA because they hypothesize that a specific research dependency or interaction between independent variables will be present as opposed to just hypothesizing a main effect. In our example, it could be the case that the effects of scarcity and social influence are additive, meaning that their combined influence is simply the sum of their separate influences. So two main effects, no interaction. It could also be that one of these variables, but not the other, has an effect, a single main effect with no interaction, or neither variable has uh, an effect. So no main effects and no interaction. In all of these situations, looking at our two independent variables and combinations does not give us much additional interesting information beyond conducting separate studies with separate uh, independent samples t-tests. However, it could also be the case that combining certain levels of our two independent variables produces some unique result, usually meaning that the effect of one independent variable depends upon or relies upon the level or condition of the other independent variable. And this dependency or reliance is called an interaction effect. As we will see, it can come in many different forms. So 
So let's say we found the pattern of results depicted over here in this graph to the right. So the question is, does social influence have an effect? Is there a left or right side difference? So yes, but only in the high scarcity condition. So only for the green bars. If you compare these bars here, there is no effect. But if you look between these two green bars, there is an effect. Now, does scarcity have an effect? Is there a blue-green difference? Yes, but only in the high influence condition, only in this right-hand panel. Thus, the effect of scarcity depends upon the level of social influence. So people are willing to spend more money only when social influence is high and scarcity is high. So it wouldn't really be correct to explain our results in any of the following ways. Scarcity has an effect, social influence have an effect, has an effect. Both scarcity and social influence have an effect. These all refer to main effects, not interactions. Rather, we must make clear that there is an interaction between scarcity and social influence. People are willing to spend more money relative to the other conditions only when a product is scarce and when a lot of people want it. The most accurate description of this uh, pattern would be scarcity interacts with social influence. This effect of scarcity depends upon the level of social influence such that high scarcity will only produce greater spending when social influence is also high. Interactions are a two-way street though. We could also explain it as the effect of social influence depends upon the level of scarcity, such that high social influence will only produce greater spending when scarcity is also high. Another way to think about an interaction effect is a difference in differences. So the difference between A and B is not the same as the difference between C and D. Or the difference between A and C is not the same as the difference between B and D. Note that this specific pattern is just one way among many in which an interaction effect might occur. For example, it might be the case that one uh, independent variable has an effect at both levels of the independent variable, but this effect is greater at one level versus another. Hence, it's still a difference in differences. Notice that here, this difference is larger than this difference, but the difference is in the same direction. In more extreme cases, the effect of one IV might flip uh, direction entirely at different levels of the other IV. This is known as a crossover interaction, and it would look something like this. So, for group one, condition one creates more accuracy, but for group two, condition two creates more accuracy. Now, it's important to note that main effects and interaction effects are not mutually exclusive results. Frequently, when there is an interaction effect, there will also be main effects. As we discussed, there is a clear interaction here, a dependency between our two independent variables. However, we will likely see a main effect as well. So a main effect of scarcity would be comparing the blue bar mean to the green bar mean. So the average between these two bars to the average between these two bars. And the main effect of influence would be comparing the left panel mean so right here, the mean of these two conditions to the right panel mean, the mean of these two conditions. In other situations, you might see a significant interaction effect with no main effects. 
we again clearly have an interaction. This is the crossover interaction. Um, yet comparing gray versus yellow means and left versus right means we'll have uh, we will get the same numbers, thus no significant main effects. So if we average these two together, if we average these two together and compare them, we'll still get the same number because they cross over perfectly. And if we compare gray and gray and green and green, the same will happen there. So significant interaction effect, but not significant main effect for either of these independent variables. Note that these types of means we're referring to where we collapse across both levels of the other independent variable are called marginal means. And by collapse, I mean average. So these are marginal means. So for example, the high scarcity mean collapsing across high and low social influence and the low influence mean collapsing across high and low scarcity. Thus a difference between marginal means, high versus low scarcity would indicate that a main effect is present. So one thing that's important to note here is that when an interaction is present, it qualifies the nature of any main effects we find. Usually if a significant interaction is found, we will interpret only this interaction as opposed to interpreting the main effects. Though we often do still present statistics for the main effects as well. Now outside of strict null hypothesis significance testing territory, we should remember to look at actual effect sizes. So in terms of effect sizes using the R squared calculation of effect size, if I have an interaction with an R squared of 0 0.01, this means that the interaction accounts for 1% of the variance in the dependent variable. If in that same, same study I have a main effect of R squared equals 0.2, that main effect accounts for 20% of the variance in the dependent variable. So this means that the main effect is 20 times the magnitude of our interaction effect. Thus, it might, might make more sense to primarily discuss results in terms of the main effect in this case, because it's much larger. So up to this point, we've only discussed situations involving between subjects ANOVAs, so each cell or condition represents a separate group of people. However, similar to a dependent samples t-test, it is also possible to expose the same group of participants to multiple levels of an independent variable in a within subjects or repeated measures design. Such a design would be analyzed with a repeated measures ANOVA. Now we won't actually learn how to work through these calculations um, of factorial ANOVA in this class. Um, these are available in the advanced topic section of the textbook. But more important is that you understand the conceptual framework behind ANOVA. So here are the most important things to understand. What is an interaction effect? And how is it different than a main effect? You want to be able to identify the presence of main effects, so differences in marginal means, and interactions, differences in differences, based on bar graphs um, and different patterns of results. And also, you need to understand how the ANOVA framework can be generalized to address many different types of research situations. So different combinations of independent variables, and levels, and of course, between subjects and within subjects designs. Now also equally important is what ANOVA can't do, which is deal with continuous rather than categorical independent variables. And this is where we'll go next with correlation and regression. That's all I have for this lecture. See you next time.